In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why is it that stuff doesn't get done in our life? Why is it that we say prayers and we don't feel like they're answered? Or that we have some difficulty in our life that just seems to remain? I think it's because our heart's not right. I speak autobiographically first. In fact, really, I think all sermons basically are some form of uh, an autobiography. At least they are in my case. We're very much alike, all of us. And we have these problems with our heart where we have lust in our heart or bad thoughts in our heart or pride, vainglory, desiring possessions or desiring attention, all those things. And that clouds our judgment. And it makes us unable to see God who's, who's right here, right in front of us, within us. And yet we don't see him very well because of, of the noise that's in our heart. When I became a true Christian, I was so thrilled with the idea. I still am. This is the thing that excites me most about Christianity, is that there will come a day where there will be nothing ugly in the heart. There will be nothing dark. It'll only be clear and light and, and beautiful. You ever been to a lake in the morning? Very early in the morning, right at sunrise? And uh, it's very quiet. The birds, perhaps, are not even up yet, so they're not getting on the water. And the water is completely clean, like a, like a mirror. Beautiful and pristine. That's what I think of. And the image comes to me when I think about what our heart will be like, just clear and smooth. That's what will happen. But in the meantime, we have this difficulty. Now, we have two readings today, one after the other, really, literally, in the, in the, in the gospel, they're right, one after the other, because one is for Wednesday, one is for Thursday. And, of course, this is not Thursday. We're reading Thursday's reading because tomorrow's the Nativity with El Tocos. So I think it's a, a happy shall we say, accident, that we're reading these two readings together before, uh, before the feast. Because they, I think they, they complement each other, because they're literally one event coming into another. So let's read the second event first. And that is, the Lord is in Tyre of Sidon, and uh, he goes into a house, and he doesn't want anybody to know about it. But of course, he's super popular, and people know about him, so everybody's talking about it. So there's a woman who is a pagan, Syrophoenician, or at least afflicted with elements of paganism. And her daughter was possessed by a devil. So she heard about him. So she really, in desperation, went to him. And she really didn't fit in that society. There were people that were going to try to keep her from going through the door. But she might even get beaten. But she went. She fall, falls down before Jesus and begs him to cast out the devil. And he tells her something that sounds so cruel, so demeaning. He says that, let the children first be filled, that is the Jews. For it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the little dogs. He's calling her a little dog. Going to be a dog in that culture. To call, be called a dog was, a, was an insult. Terrible insult. Much more so than in our culture. So she answers him without any shred of anger or pride or vanity, but just brutal honesty. The kind of honesty that, that comes only from a humble heart and the kind of courage that only comes from a humble heart. She says, yea, Lord, yet even the little dogs under the table eat of the, little, of the children's crumbs. So the Lord says, for this saying, go thy way. And the devil's gone out of thy dog. For this saying, what a simple thing. For this saying, go thy way. Because her heart was humble, she asked the Lord something, and she had confidence that the Lord indeed would provide it, even though she was not even of his race. She wasn't of his religion. 
She was a doll. Imagine if we asked the Lord in such a way, understanding that we are little dogs. Now, we are of the same race. The Lord Jesus Christ abides in our hearts. So we're not of the same stature and status as she was. She was of a lower status. She was not even a household of God. And we are. But what if we considered ourselves, because of our sins, because of our weaknesses, because of all the things that we do when we, and that we don't do, to be like little dogs? And yet, the little dogs can eat of the crumbs. What if we ask the Lord with great humility for everything, understanding that we deserve nothing, but that he's our Father, and that he will give? Not because we deserve that we deserve anything, but because he loves us and not through any merit of our own. What if we did that? <coughs> Excuse me. What would our life be like? I think our life would be like that of the saints that had all kinds of miraculous things happening all around them. Now, they were always thinking they were unworthy, and yet they were always very sure the Lord was going to provide. That's what our life would be like. Now, what keeps us from doing that? What keeps us from the saying to say, Yea, Lord, even the little dogs eat from their master's table. And I am a little dog, I agree with you. But it keeps us from, from that same thing. I think what keeps us from it is what is in the first reading, the things that are in the heart. The Lord made it very clear by his teaching that what defiles us is what is within us and then comes out. Not that what there comes in. Now there were all kinds of dietary laws and such and people thought that you'd be defiled by eating pork or other other animals that were forbidden and fish without scales, etc. And they were obsessed with this idea of purity based upon something external, touching a dead body or some other such thing made you impure. What they didn't understand, and what people still to this day do not understand, is that purity is something which is within the heart or impurity is within the heart. And the expression of that purity or impurity comes out from the heart, from basically the person we are. I tell people all the time regarding confession when I teach about it, that confession is not so much saying things you did or things you didn't do. Most of the time we think about things we did. I was lazy, I cussed, blah, blah, blah. And... Um, or sometimes people, you know, unnerved me by saying the first thing is, well, maybe I had a little cheese on a salad when we had a business lunch. And that's the first thing they say. That's just an external thing. What people should be saying, what you and I should be saying is that our hearts are not pure. There's something within us that makes us act the wrong way, think the wrong way, be the wrong thing. So often, our hearts are afflicted with this, this disease. And that we should beg the Lord to pur purify our hearts. And then things will be amazing. And this woman who wasn't even of the household faith, she understood this principle. She knew she wasn't pure. She knew she wasn't clean. She was a pagan. Maybe she participated in pagan ceremonies, or maybe she was just around it and didn't protest because that was her culture. And because of the pagan influence, her daughter had become possessed by a demon. And she loved her daughter. She knew that her religion offered no respite from the demons because they worshipped the demons. So she went to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm convinced we don't have any, as far as I know, any historical record of her after this. But I'm convinced that she came to the faith Anyone with this amount of humility and with this humility, such courage, such plain speaking, must have, when she came home to her daughter and saw her daughter was in her right mind, she must have followed Christ, either literally or uh, followed him in belief. And eventually someone would have found their way to her and baptized her and her daughter this is a principle of living. Most of us don't know it. 
I don't know it half the time and I talk about it because things get in the way. Pride gets in the way. Um, all the things that are mentioned, some of these things that are mentioned perhaps we don't have, the things that the Lord says that come out of the heart. But we have plenty of them. We have enough pride to float a battleship, that's for sure. And we have something that's just wrong in us. And if we recognize that when we pray to God, great things happen. Such a simple way of living. Everything that happens in the, in the world happens because of pride. Because of people <clears throat> having ambition, not caring for others, thinking only of themselves. All of the wars, all of the poverty, everything. It's not a political problem. It's a problem of the heart. And we can't do anything about the large-scale problem, but we can with ourselves. We can be a little bit more like this woman. And we can pray with humility, recognizing that we are like her. We're unclean in our heart. But God wants to clean our hearts. So we can think that we are unclean. Absolutely, we should. But if we think we cannot be clean, then now we've fallen into despondency, the type of despondency that can cast a person into hell because we would be right at our Lord Jesus Christ like Peter was and the waves are high and we see only the waves. The only reason why Peter was saved in the waves is because the Lord spoke to him and made him realize, wait a minute, the Lord is right here. So may God preserve us. May God help us. May God help us to have humble hearts, truly humble hearts, and pray to God with humility, and then amazing thing happens. May God bless us and help us in all things.